Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to take a look at creating what I like to call a vivid sky. And I'm sure if you've looked at any kind of stock photography, you've seen very many vivid skies. And uh, I actually downloaded this photograph right here off of the stock exchange, which is www.sxc.hu. This is one of the photographs I have available for download. And it's looking a little lackluster. It doesn't, you know, it's not very sharp. Um, it could use a little bit of a bumping up. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And I'm going to show you how to make that vivid sky. And while we're at it, we're going to correct the color of the grass because the grass is a little brown and swampy looking. So we have this PSD. And just as a quick uh, preview, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. There's what we're going to do with it. I'm going to show you how exactly we're going to do that. I'm going to take all these and I'm going to delete them. Delete the selected layers, yes. So here we go, we have our original image. The first thing that I want to do, and I recommend that you do it, whenever you start with an image, I'm going to zoom into 100% to do this here. We want to sharpen the image. I'm going to come up here to filter and I'm going to go sharpen, smart sharpen. Now because I'm using CS3, I can convert this for smart filters. And if you are using CS3, I recommend that you use smart filters. But for the sake of everybody not using CS3, I am just going to do this the old-fashioned way, which is to just use Smart Sharpen. And you can see we get a preview of what's happening behind us, both in the image and the dialog box. And you can see that that's quite a bit of sharpening, too much. We're going to reduce the radius to 0 0.5. And that looks pretty good. So we're going to hit OK. I just have my mouth set 100% and remove Gaussian Blur. Yeah, let's leave it on Gaussian Blur. Hit OK. And there we go. We've sharpened the image. You can do a quick before and after. We've got a much sharpened image. So the first thing we're going to do is make our grass green. You can see it's very brown looking down here. So what I want to do is create what's called an adjustment layer. Now in order to create this, I'm going to drag my layers palette out here. I'm going to select this circle that is half black and half white. These are all of our adjustment layers. I want to use a hue saturation adjustment layer. So I'm going to select hue saturation, and you can see we have this adjustment layer in our layers palette. And I've got the hue saturation dialog box open. What's the advantage of using adjustment layers? Well, I'll show you. Let's just hit OK without making any changes. You can see we have this adjustment layer here. If I were to want to go back and edit it, I can just double click on this icon and here's my hue saturation dialog box. So it's really, really easy to go back and just edit stuff. If, if you make a change later on and you realize you need to change something or any number of reasons, there are plenty of reasons why you may want to go back and change something. So here we go. What we're going to do is we need to edit this grass. The first thing I noticed about it is there's a lot of red in it and there's also a lot of yellow in it. So I want to edit not my master channel, but my yellows. Let's edit our yellows first. And you can see down here, I want you to take a look at this. This is something very important. And uh, when you memorize this, you're going to find that you have a lot more power and understand a lot more easily what the hue saturation command is doing every time you open it and use it. You have these two color spectrums located at the bottom of the dialog box. The spectrum on the top is the color that you're editing. You can see in this case we have in solid gray highlighted this yellow section. There's the colors we're editing. If I shift the hue slider, you're going to notice that the bottom color spectrum moves. That is because that is the color that the top spectrum is becoming. So for example, I'm going to move this this way which is to the right, by the way. And what's happening is my yellows are becoming greens, because you see now the green is directly below the yellow. And you can see already the grass looks a little better. OK? Already looks green. OK, I'm going to give it a little more saturation to kind of bump up the grass a little bit. We're going to edit the greens. I'm going to make them just a little bit darker. And you can see that it's not editing very much, because not much of the grass was green to begin with. I'm going to up the saturation a little, and I'm going to shift the hue ever so slightly to the left. Now I'm going to come up here to the reds channel, and I want to desaturate them just a little bit. Increase the brightness a little bit, 
And maybe we'll shift the hue a little to make them sort of orangey. And we will hit OK. Now I'm going to drag my Layers panel back into its area here. Now let's take a look at this with the Hue Saturation Adjustment layer. And there it is without. So with, you can see the grass is much greener. But it doesn't really look like really vividly green grass. It looks like green grass, but nothing special. So let's double click, go back into the Hue Saturation layer. This time we're going to edit the Master Channel. I'm going to increase the brightness. Notice this is increasing brightness of the sky too. Just a little bit, maybe one or two, or maybe we could even leave it without increasing it at all. And then we're going to bump up the actual saturation. Okay, just like that. Maybe even make it a little bit darker. Now we don't want to do that. Let's just increase it by about four. Two. Just try increasing it by two and increase the saturation. Up, push it up to 30. That looks pretty good. Hit OK. And you can see now that there's quite a significant difference in the grass and the sky for that matter. So there we go. We've made the grass green. But now let's get around to that vivid sky part since that's essentially what this tutorial is about. Create a new layer. And we're going to grab the gradient tool. And I just want a simple black to white gradient. Hit OK. Make sure reverse is not checked. And make sure that you're using a linear gradient. Start at the top of your screen, or actually halfway down the sky, because in this case the sky is taking up over two thirds of the image, more like three quarters, maybe even a little more than three quarters of the image. So I'm going to start about halfway down from the sky, and I'm just going to pull this straight down to about halfway through the grass. You're going to see I get this nice black to white gradient. It's not doing very much for me right now, because it just covered up everything I had. What I want to do is change the blend mode. We can select the blend modes from here and let's just take a look at a few of them. Let's try screen. That doesn't do me much good. Let's try linear dodge. That doesn't do me much good. All those seem too bright. Let's try something a little darker like multiply. Oh, that covers up most of my sky. That doesn't work. Let's try overlay. That's pretty good except that really blows the sky out and blows the grass out. Let's try soft light. Soft light, that looks pretty good. Although I can see my sky is becoming pretty noisy. And that's, well, there's a few reasons that's happening. But basically, what we want to do is let's go back to normal and let's redraw this gradient. We have too much black up there in the sky. So let's start the gradient somewhere up here and draw it straight down like that. Okay, you can see we've got much less black. Let's go back to our layers and hit, oh, not overlay. <laughs> It's soft light. There we go. Soft light. So now we've got this nice blue sky. All right. Our grass is completely blown out. So what we need to do is give this a mask. Hit the layer mask button there. Grab your brush tool. Set the foreground color to black. And I'm going to make sure the flow of my brush is at 100. And I'm just going to paint over our grass here. I'm just roughly going over it. Now I'm going to reduce the flow to about 30 and I'm just going to go over this bottom portion of the sky. I'm just going to go back and forth a couple times just like that. You can see over here in our mask what's going on. I'm going to zoom out one more. As you can see I've been missing part of my grass. There we go. And reduce that flow once again to 45 and just go over those areas there just like that. So that's perfect. Now, you can already see a huge difference between this image and the image we started with. I'm just going to hold down the Alt or the Option key and select the eyeball on the background layer. Okay, so that was the image as it was when we first opened it. This is how it is now. Now, it still isn't completely like I want it, so let's create another new layer. Let's grab that gradient tool once again, but this time, check off reverse and grab the radial gradient. What's going to happen here is this white to the left hand side of your gradient spectrum, that's going to be the center of the gradient. So we're going to start that in the middle, almost as if it's a sunrise or something. And we're just going to drag out almost to the very edge of our document. Okay, so we've got this nice ball of light right there in the middle. Now, switch this blend mode to soft light as well. Now you can see that we've got some pretty crazy things happening here. And we can actually use a mask to really top this off and make it look really nice. So let's apply a mask. And we could just go in with the mask and get rid of all of this here. Okay. Take all of that off the grass, which looks pretty good. 
But we could also, I'm going to set my foreground color to white here. Hit OK. I'm going to reduce my flow to about 30. I might want some of that light to show through onto the grass like this. So we've got this light patch right in the center of the grass. Or, let me get rid of that, I may want a little bit of the dark to show over here on these sides. Almost like the sun is coming down or rising up above our little pasture here. I'm going to flip my foreground and background colors using the X key. I'm just going to paint away some of this stuff. So it sort of looks like that. And I am going to now hold in the Alt key and select my layer mask. Okay, you can see I now just see the gray scale of that mask. I can hold Alt and click it again, and it goes back to normal. But these areas here are just a little bit too dark for my liking. So I'm going to hold Alt, and I want to lighten the overall appearance of my mask. So I'm going to go to Adjustments, Image Adjustments, Brightness Contrast, and I'm going to jack up the brightness a little bit. Now hold down the Alt or Option key, select that layer mask, and you can see here we are back out here, and it looks quite a bit better. You can see there's before, there's after, and that's just a really quick, easy way to create a vivid sky. Now, I have to let you know that using this technique, it works the best on high resolution images. Hopefully, when you're photographing, taking pictures, whatever, you're using or you're taking high resolution photography because the higher the resolution, the better your effects are going to be, the less noise you're going to generate up here in the sky where you're doing the most color changing. So that's just something I wanted to point out before I let you go. And once again, before, after, and this works on a whole bunch of different kinds of images. Um, it tends to work, I have found, nicely on images with a lot of clouds in the sky or a lot of streaking in the sky. It really increases the contrast and really pushes everything out and really makes it jump out at you. Really, really a nice effect for photographs and also a really neat way to color correct your grass. So that's it for this one. I hope you've learned something. I hope you have enjoyed it. And uh, please go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Thank you very much for watching.